Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on refraction and lenses. The topic of this video is the direction of refraction, and we want to know how can one predict the direction that an incident ray will refract when it crosses the boundary between two materials. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. When a light wave crosses the boundary between two materials, it undergoes a change in speed, wavelength, and direction. This change in direction of a light wave at the boundary is known as refraction. Instead of traveling along a straight line path, the path of light is bent at the boundary. We often represent this by a ray diagram. In this ray diagram, the incident wave is represented by a red incident ray traveling through material A and approaching the boundary with material B. When it reaches the boundary, it will not travel along the straight line path, but instead will refract in one of two directions. If it refracts towards the normal line, then the refracted ray will be located in the region between the normal line and the dashed straight line path. In this situation of bending towards the normal line, the blue refracted ray is closer to the normal line than the red incident ray is. But a light ray could also refract away from the normal line, and if it does, instead of following the straight line path, it, the refracted ray will be located in the region between the boundary line and that dashed straight line path. In such a situation of bending away from the normal line, the blue refracted ray is further away from the normal line than the red incident ray is. When an incident ray is in a material where it's traveling faster and passing into a material where it's traveling slower, it will bend towards the normal line. In this ray diagram, we see an incident ray in the faster material A approaching a boundary with the slower material B. Instead of following the straight line path, it will bend in one of two directions. Because it's moving from fast to slow, it bends towards the normal line. So the refracted ray will be closer to the normal line than the incident ray is. In a situation such as this, the angle of incidence is greater than the angle of refraction. In example 2, the incident ray is in the faster material A approaching the boundary with material B, but this time from underneath the boundary. Instead of traveling along the straight line path, it will bend in one of two directions. Because it's fast to slow, it bends towards the normal line, placing the blue refracted ray closer to the normal line than the red incident ray is. Once more, in this situation, the angle of incidence is greater than the angle of refraction. In our final situation, we have a light ray traveling through the faster material A towards the slower material B, but this time the boundary is vertical instead of horizontal. Once more, the light ray will not travel along the straight line path, but instead will bend in one of two directions, either towards or away from the normal line. Because it's bending towards the normal line, the blue refracted ray will be closer towards the dashed normal line than the red incident ray is. It's this ray here. Once more, the angle of refraction is smaller than the angle of incidence. When a light ray travels from a material where it's traveling slower into a material where it's traveling faster, it will bend away from the normal line. In this first example, we see the light ray is in the slower material A approaching the boundary with material B. Instead of traveling along the straight line path, it will bend in one of two directions. For slow to fast, the bending occurs away from the normal line, such that the refracted ray is in that region between the dashed straight line path and the boundary line. That's bending away from the normal line and the angle of incidence is smaller than the angle of refraction. In our second example, the incident ray is approaching the boundary from underneath. It's still going from slow to fast and will still not follow the straight line path, but bend in one of two directions. Picking the direction away from the normal line means that you pick the region between the dashed straight line path and the boundary line, as shown here. Once more, the angle of incidence is smaller than the angle of refraction. In our final situation, the light is in the slower material A approaching the boundary with a faster material B, but this time the normal line is horizontal and the boundary line is vertical. So the bending occurs in such a manner that the blue refracted ray is further away from the normal line than the red incident ray is. That means the blue refracted ray will be located between the straight line path and the boundary line as shown here. Once more, the angle of incidence is less than the angle of refraction. 
So far, we've seen how to predict the direction that light will bend when you know the relative speed of light within the two materials on opposite sides of the boundary. But what if you don't have speed information, but instead have optical density information? Optical density is a property of a material that reflects how fast light will be traveling in that material. The rule is that light travels fastest in the materials that are least optically dense. If we know the relative optical density of the two materials on opposite sides of the boundary, we can predict the direction that light will bend. Let's develop two rules for the situation. In the first rule, light is traveling in the more optically dense material into the material which is least optically dense. This is equivalent to traveling from a material where light travels slower into a material where light travels faster. And in such a situation, the bending occurs away from the normal line. In our second situation, light is traveling from the less optically dense material into a more optically dense material. That's equivalent to traveling from the material where light travels fastest and into the material where light travels slowest. In such a situation, the light will bend towards the normal line. Now I'd like to discuss how you predict the direction of bending if you know the index of refraction or n value of the two materials on opposite sides of the boundary. The index of refraction value is a numerical value that's unique to every material that gives us a relative measure of how fast or slow that light is traveling in the material. It's important to recognize that the n value and the speed of light are inversely related. So materials with the highest n value are materials where light travels slowest, and materials with the smallest n values are materials where light travels fastest. Let's use this information to develop two rules of bending for light crossing a boundary. In the first rule, light is traveling from a material with a high end value into a material with a low end value. In such a situation, light is traveling from the slow material into the fast material, and it will bend away from the normal line. In our second rule, light is traveling from a material with a lower index of refraction value into a material with a higher index of refraction value. This is equivalent to light traveling from a material where it travels fast into a material where it travels slow, and in such a situation the light will bend towards the normal line. Let's use what we've learned to analyze a situation that you might have encountered in a physics lab in which red laser light traveling through air enters into a rectangular block of lucite glass and exits out the other side. In order to make the situation more clear, I'm going to include and close the rectangular block by a gray rectangle and represent the light by incident and refracted rays, as you see here. Now we're going to begin by analyzing the top boundary where light is in air and traveling towards the slower lucite. In such a situation of light traveling from fast to slow, the bending occurs towards the normal line. So you notice the light ray within the glass is closer to that normal line than the light ray in air is. As the light exits the lucite glass back into the air, it's going from a material where it's traveling slow, the lucite, into a material where it travels faster, the air. When light goes from slow to fast, it bends away from the normal line as shown here. If you're studying this topic to prepare for a physics course, then you need to be prepared for a question that has a format something like this. As light travels from, and what goes in the blank here could be something like a slower material or a material with a higher index of refraction or a more dense material, into a material with the opposite property, so it might be a slower material where light travels slowest, etc then it bends either towards or away from the normal line. You have to fill in the blanks. So let's look at this situation from the lens of fast to slow, bending is towards, and slow to fast, the bending is away. Here are numerous possibilities that could fill in these blanks. In the first one, the blanks, first blank would be fast, and the second would be slow. So from fast to slow. So I always remember this one as towards the normal line. FST is my mnemonic for remembering that, fast to slow towards. But you could also get from less dense to more dense. And the way I think about that is light travels faster in a less dense material, slow lower in a more dense material. So to say from less dense to more dense is like saying from fast to slow. So I just remember that as towards the normal line. And then finally, you could get from a low index of refraction to a high index of refraction. Once more, the way I think about that is low end means fast and high end means slow. So once more, this is fast to slow bending towards the normal line. So in all three situations, you see here the bending is towards the normal line. Now let's look at the opposite case 
cases, beginning with slow to fast. That's the one I memorized with the mnemonic SFA, uh, slow to fast bends away. So that's an away situation. But you could also get from more dense to less dense. So I always think about this through the lens of slow to fast away and fast to slow towards. So more dense is slow and less dense is fast. So this is bending away from the normal line. And finally, you could have from high index of refraction to low index of refraction, and that's equivalent once more to slow to fast. The bending is away from the normal line. There is one exception to refraction, and that is when light is traveling along the normal line as it approaches the boundary. That is, it's traveling perpendicular to the boundary. When this takes place, the light wave will change its speed and change its wavelength, but it will not change its direction. This is the lone exception to refraction when light crosses the boundary between two materials. To illustrate, let's consider this situation in which we have light approaching a rectangular lucite block perpendicular to the boundary. To make the diagram clearer, let's include Close the rectangular lucite block in a gray rectangle and show the light's path by incident and refracted rays. What we notice is at the top boundary, the light ray is perpendicular to the boundary along the normal line and it refracts across, it, it passes across the boundary without any bending or change in direction. The same thing occurs as the light exits the lucite block. In a situation like this, the angle of incidence is zero degrees and the angle of refraction is zero degrees. And stating the angles as such, we're measuring them relative to the normal line. And so in this situation, no refraction as light crosses the boundary. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each of them in the description section of this video. You'll notice that there are two Minds on Physics missions, either one of which could be perfect next steps. There's a concept builder, and find Finally, there's a physics tutorial for brushing up on the topic. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.